It's 5:30, and this is WKYT this morning. A Mercer County teenager accused of murdering another teenager will head to court this morning. We're looking ahead to Trenton Easterling's day in court. Also ahead on WKYT, the presidential candidates are trying to court voters just 15 days now ahead of the general election. We're covering the campaign just ahead this morning. And we could learn today where Lexington's Fraternal Order of Firefighters will house their annual toy drive. That and your Kentucky forecast straight ahead on WKYT this morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning, Kentucky Morning Start right here on WKYT. We're glad you're part of the crowd. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Andrea Walker. It is great to see you on this Monday, October 24th. And before we get to your forecast, we do want to let you know that your newspaper might be a little late this morning. Workers at the Lexington Herald Leader tell us they had a press issue overnight, but everyone should have their newspaper by 9 o'clock this morning at the very latest. I stopped to get one, and this is the Sunday, so. Yes, you can still get Sunday in case you missed that, though. Maybe so, if they have any left yeah. over. All right, we had a beautiful weekend. It was chilly in the mornings, but mm -hmm. uh, nice in the afternoons, and that's uh, sort of our trend, it sounds like. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like the next few days. Just we're cool this morning. The good news here is we're not seeing any chance at 30s or 40s this morning, so we're sitting there in the 50s for the most part as you walk outside early this morning. 67 by the afternoon, a lot of sunny skies. So today is really your typical. Uh, fall day in store, 67, mostly sunny, looks good, feels good. I see no chance of rain anytime soon. You really got to hit late in the work week to actually see that chance of rain move on in. So it's really just a normal look and feel uh, later on today and really the next few days. We're going to go over that. I'll show you when the rain moves on in and if we're seeing any chance of severe weather with this coming up in a few minutes. Hey, we'll see you then. Let's get to the news. A Mercer County teenager accused of murdering and robbing another teen will head to court this morning. 16 year old Trenton Easterling is accused of murdering and robbing Tristan Cole in April. WKYT's Lauren Miner is at our live desk with the new details on this. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning, Bill. As you just said, 16 year old Trenton Easterling is accused of murdering. And robbing Tristan Cole back in April. Cole's father says that 17 year old was shot in the back and left to die in a field. His body was discovered in a remote area of Mercer County after he missed a day of classes. Two other teens have also been charged in the case. Zachary Lay and Megan Sims are charged with tampering with physical evidence. They are both currently out on bond. Easterling will appear before a Mercer County judge today at 10 a.m. His public defender has asked. Asked the judge in the case to consider suppressing some statements made by the defendant. Easterling pleaded not guilty in July. Reporting from the live desk, Lauren Miner, WKYT. Lauren, thank you. We now know the names of two men who police say were shot in Lexington last week, and police say the shooting did stem from a robbery. Police say the men were shot Thursday night at a home on Red Mile Road. Demetrian Boaz is charged with first degree robbery. According to court documents, Boaz and two others held two people at gunpoint until someone else filed shots at the suspects. The documents go on to say that one of the victims, Robert Record, was shot once in the back on accident. Police say he's expected to be okay. The second victim, Saquon Freeman, was shot five times. Police say Freeman is still in serious condition. We're told the robbery happened after Boaz pulled out a gun on his cousin who was trying to sell him marijuana. No other arrests have been made in the case. In southern Kentucky, state police say one man is dead after an officer involved shooting. Troopers say a woman called 911 in Metcalf County, saying that she had been in a fight with her boyfriend and that he was outside shooting a gun in the air. When officers got to the house, troopers tell us the man, Kenny Tomlin, came out of the home with a rifle. Troopers say Tomlin would not put down his rifle and he fired a shot. They fired back, killing him. A neighbor says the gunshots woke her up. It was terrifying. I, he was hollering, let's get down on the floor. He's still shooting. Me, I just got up and opened the door, said, what the hell's going on? Holloway says some of the bullets hit around her bedroom window where she was sleeping. Police say no one else was injured, and state police are still investigating the circumstances of the shooting. A woman was rushed to the hospital after being attacked overnight in Lexington. Police say the woman was walking down Man of War near Palumbo Drive when a man tried to steal her purse. He was not able to, but during the struggle, police say the woman hit her head on a light pole. Someone called police after seeing her walking down the road and bleeding from the head. 
The teenage daughter of Lexington native and Olympian Tyson Gay will be laid to rest today. 15 year old Trinity Gay was shot and killed last Saturday in the parking lot of a Lexington restaurant. Police say two other vehicles, people in those vehicles, were firing shots at each other, and Trinity got caught in the crossfire. Over the weekend, hundreds packed Southland Christian Church in Nicholasville to say goodbye to Trinity. Her burial will be in Russellville. So far, four people have been charged in connection to the deadly shooting. Deputies in southeastern Kentucky are needing help in finding a woman wanted for passing fake money. The Whitley County Sheriff's Office posted this photo of the woman they're looking for. They say she is responsible for passing counterfeit $100 bills at at least two businesses. Deputies say the phony bills showed up in Corbin and in Williamsburg and even at the County Sheriff's Department. The bills passed the marker test but did not have the plastic vertical strip that runs across new bills. Well, just 15 days to the general election, and Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are stepping up their efforts in key states. A new CBS News poll out Sunday shows Clinton leading Trump by three points in Florida, and Trump is ahead by only three points in the usually red state of Texas. Roxana Subari has the latest on campaign 2016. Hillary Clinton crisscrossed North Carolina Sunday, appearing alongside mothers of the movement in Raleigh and blasting Donald Trump at a rally in Charlotte. He refused to say that he would respect the results of our election. Some people are sore losers and, you know, we just, we just got to keep going. Stumping for Clinton in Las Vegas, President Obama criticized Republicans for backing the GOP nominee. When you finally get him on tape bragging about actions that qualify as sexual assault and his poll numbers go down, suddenly that's a deal breaker. Well, what took you so long? Recent polls show a number of pivotal states slipping away from Trump, including the usually red state of Texas. The latest CBS Battleground tracker shows Trump leading Clinton by only three points in the state. We are behind. Uh, Despite the dire numbers, Trump's campaign manager, Kellyanne Conway, says he still has a chance. Our advantage is that Donald Trump is just going to continue to take the case directly to the people. It's rigged. It's broken. It's corrupt. At an outdoor rally in Florida yesterday, Trump continued to question the U.S. voting system, as well as polls showing Clinton leading him among women. I really think those polls are very inaccurate when it comes to women. I think we're doing better with women than with men, frankly. Early voting is set to begin in most Florida counties today. Roxana Saberi for CBS News. And Donald Trump continues campaigning in Florida today. Hillary Clinton will be heading to New Hampshire, where she'll be holding a rally with Senator Elizabeth Warren. On Thursday, Clinton heads back to North Carolina, where she will campaign alongside First Lady Michelle Obama for the first time. Absentee voting is now available in all Kentucky counties. It opened up Friday. Remember, though, you do have to have a reason in Kentucky to vote early. You can vote in person at your county clerk's office or through the mail. You can also qualify to vote absentee in Kentucky for other reasons, like if you're in the military or pregnant. But lying on your absentee application is a crime. You can contact your county clerk's office if you have any questions about absentee voting. U.S. Senate candidate and Lexington Mayor Jim Gray will campaign in central Kentucky today. Gray will talk with supporters in Somerset about important issues for Kentucky. Gray is running against the incumbent, U.S. Senator Rand Paul. The meet and greet event starts at 5 at 151 Mount Vernon Street in Somerset. While Jim Beam employees are back at work this morning after going on strike, employees voted to go back to work on Friday. About 250 employees walked off the job more than a week ago at distilleries in Claremont and Boston after voting down a contract offer. They wanted more full-time workers hired instead of temporary employees. We've learned that a new contract was passed, and the company says they will hire more full-time workers in an effort to cut down on overtime by current workers. Both distilleries are back to making bourbon at full force this morning. Uh, they had been working 60 to 80 hours, and uh, said that's that, tough. Yeah, said there was no time, you know, for family and the, their own uh, commitments, yeah. and so uh, they've uh, apparently worked that out. Well, we could find out today whether or not the Lexington Fraternal Order of Firefighters will have a location for their annual toy program. We're expecting firefighters to release more details about the toy drive this morning. WKYT's Mike Byer is live in Lexington, looking ahead to the announcement. Good morning, Mike. 
Good morning, Andrea. We will just have to wait and see if the new location is part of the announcement this morning from the Lexington Fraternal Order of Firefighters. One thing is certain, though, is that this is their 85th toy drive, which is outstanding. Firefighters will hold a press conference later this morning. At that time, they will release more info about the program, including when parents can start signing up. Last week, Paul Miller Ford donated a van for firefighters to use for their annual toy program, a program firefighters hope to receive a record amount of toy donations for this year. Now, firefighters are expected to announce the official start date for this year's program. Of course, we will be there and we'll inform you about everything you need to know about this year's toy drive. Live in Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. Okay, Mike, thank you very much. And the ladies of Big Blue Nation packed Rupp Arena for the annual John Calipari Women's Clinic. And they actually set a record this year. This is the first year the clinic was held at Rupp Arena. More than a thousand women showed up yesterday. Now, during the clinic, Coach Cal surprised everyone with a $10,000 donation to the Markey Cancer Foundation. A one a woman we spoke with there says she was actually diagnosed with a brain tumor last December. I am so lucky that I had the support from friends and family and Big Blue Nation. So many people who I didn't even know, who have seen interviews or articles, have reached out, have donated. Everywhere I go, I feel like a celebrity now, but that has helped more than anybody will know. Ashley Lyle says the tumor usually leaves people with only months to live. Her goal last season was to make it to the SEC tournament, and as you can see, she has done that and more, and is rocking that blue hair. <laughs> she looks <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Big blue hair. <laughs> Just you can see her spirit coming through her. She's yeah, a fighter. Well, good for her, and it is uh, wonderful to, that she does feel that that sense of uh, mm -hmm. support from the community. Our time this morning is 5:42, and let's check traffic and see what's going on on this Monday morning. Here's a look at the region, clean and green. We have really no reports of any problems. I-75, I-64 looking good. U.S. 27 south out of Lexington, good through Nicholasville and on down to Somerset as far as uh, we can see right now with no reports of any problems. All right, now let's take a look outside courtesy of the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government Live Drive Camera. We're looking at Manowar and Richmond Road right now, a very busy intersection always during the day, but right now it's looking very clean. And clear, and everything's good to go on your Monday morning. Okay, everybody buckle up. Let's make it a safe one. There's a lot more news coming up Monday morning on WKYT. Hope you'll stick right here with us. Still ahead, this new world record is delicious. We'll take a look at the world's longest chocolate eclair right oh. after Micah's forecast. It's all about temperatures the next few days as we'll start to see a midweek cold front slide on through here and bring us showers and thunderstorms. We're going to go over all that and the timing on that coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Low to mid 50s as you step out the door early this morning. No 30s, no 40s, so it's getting a little bit warmer as we track throughout the next few days. It's 57 degrees right now in Lexington, 54 Mount Sterling, my friends in Jackson. Coming in at 58 degrees in Laurel County, you go off toward Pulaski County, all is well. It's just on the cool side, sitting there in the 50s. So a pretty nice one in store later on this afternoon. 67, no problems for the kids going off to the bus stop, nor them coming home. May need a light coat early this morning before they take off and you take off. And then the next few days remain the same. Now through your Wednesday, I don't see much of a change. Let's talk about Wednesday night, though. As of right now, I would say I'm leaving the rain chances out on Wednesday. But watch this as we go off towards, say, your midnight. Midnight, we'll stop it there, and you can see that rain is approaching us. So there is a possibility that this thing could speed up another three, six hours, and that would put it into Wednesday night. But as of right now, it's going to be into Thursday morning that we start to see some showers and thunderstorms move on through. Now, obviously, this is no widespread rain as of right now. I have about a 40% chance of rain in the forecast for your Thursday. There's 8 a.m. Thursday morning, so most of this comes during the morning hours. And then just fades as we go through, the, through your day with temperatures right around 70 degrees. So it's really not a, it's so much a cold front. It's more of a rainy front that's going to be passing on through there during midweek. And that could help us out with some of these leaves. Fall foliage. The peak time going on was mid-October over toward eastern Kentucky, so we're already past that, right? I haven't seen many vibrant colors out there uh, from you guys sending me pictures on Facebook or on Twitter. Uh, the rest of us are sitting here late October, which is right now. Uh, we should see some peak colors out and about some vibrant colors, but you're just not really seeing it this time of year. And the reason being, or this year rather, reason being is it's been so dry outside. Yes, we did get some rain last week, 
But you got to remember before that, it's been a while. So this ground's so dry. And what happens is, is these leaves just don't become as vibrant. They don't stick around for a long time because it dries out those trees. And then they turn brown very quickly and fall off very quickly. So we're just not going to get those vibrant colors. Some of us do have some good looking trees outside. Don't get me wrong. But in terms of just widespread, just the beautiful look that we typically get this time of year, we're just not seeing it. 67 degrees there today and 65 on uh, your day on Tuesday. Now, Wednesday's right around 70. Next three days look pretty good. Like I said, there's a rain chance on Thursday. Your cold front comes toward the weekend. So it's a rainy front there during midweek, cold front there during the weekend, and that will drop temperatures down to the upper 50s, lower 60s. But I am missing just that widespread look of just the nice colors on the trees. And that is the yes. key because what you will notice is that you'll have green trees and then there'll be one that's yes. just wildly yeah. vibrant. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Very isolated. But not there. a lot of, yeah, just uh, right. overall the, yep. the deep golds and red. Right. And yeah. Yeah. Micah, thank you. Good week ahead, it looks like. Absolutely. 549 our time. And a Belgian baker has set a new world record for the world's largest chocolate eclair. <laughs> The record was set over the weekend in Brussels. The chocolate eclair measures just oh over 2,200 feet long. Did you get that? Almost <laughs> half a mile. Uh, the Brussels Times reports the baker used 2,000 eggs, 154 pounds of butter, 110 pounds of flour, and 80 gallons of milk. It would have cost more than 1,600 U.S. dollars, but all the ingredients were donated for this. The massive chocolate eclair beat the previous record holder by about 550 feet. Beat it handily, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, that is a big one. I bet people enjoyed uh, helping him get rid of that chocolate did, eclair, huh? Well, Folks just want to see it. Yeah, I know. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. <laughs> Pretty cool. Well, coming up, you'll get a look at the stories making news at this hour. We're we'll checking traffic again for you. See how things are ahead of the morning commute on your Monday morning. We have some health news and a lot more, and it sure is good to have you with us here on WKYT this morning. Good morning. Welcome back into WKYT this morning. We're glad you're with us on your Monday. Hope you had a nice weekend and you're ready to go this work week. We'll make right? it a good one. Let's yeah. take a look at some of the stories we're working on for you this morning. A 15 year old Trinity Gay will be laid to rest today. Trinity was shot and killed last Saturday in the parking lot of a Lexington restaurant. Over the weekend, hundreds packed Southland Christian Church in the Nicholasville area to say goodbye to Trinity. Her burial will be in Russellville. So far, Four people have been charged in connection to the deadly shooting. A Mercer County teenager accused of murdering and robbing another teen will head to court this morning. 16 year old Trenton Easterling is accused of murdering and robbing Tristan Cole in April. Easterling's public defender has asked the judge in the case to consider suppressing some statements made by the defendant. Easterling pleaded not guilty in July. Topping your national headlines, federal safety investigators are still trying to figure out what led to a deadly weekend crash near Palm Springs, California. At least 13 people were killed and dozens were injured when a tour bus collided into a tractor trailer along Interstate 10 Sunday. Officials say the bus, which was returning from a casino, was traveling significantly faster than the tractor trailer that it was, then it was struck from behind. With just 15 days to the general election, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are stepping up their efforts in key states. After making four stops in North Carolina yesterday, Clinton campaigns with Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren in New Hampshire today, while Trump holds more events in Florida. A CBS News poll out Sunday shows Clinton leading Trump by three points in the Sunshine State and almost tied with the Republican in the usually red state of Texas. A new approach in breast cancer treatment tops your health headlines this morning. A new study is suggesting doctors are using genetic testing to help some patients avoid chemotherapy. Researchers surveyed more than 1,500 women with early stage breast cancer, and they found nearly two thirds regarded the precision medicine test as helpful when deciding if chemotherapy is necessary. All right, let's get a check this hour at today's traffic trouble spots with live drive traffic. And hopefully there are none here on this Monday. <laughs> yeah. Here's a look at the travel times heading into Lexington, and it is really good this morning. Everybody moving along fine from all of the uh, outlying cities, Nicholasville, Versailles, Paris, Georgetown, Richmond, Mount Sterling. It's a good ride in. No reports of any early trouble. And here may be why as we take a look at the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government live drive cam, North Broadway and I-75. As you can see, it's mostly clear, very quiet. I guess that's the reason why there's not too many problems this morning, which is a good way to start your week, your Monday. 
off on the right foot today. Yeah, hopefully alert and refreshed and ready That's to right. go, right? Okay. And it's a, going to be a nice day or two here. We have a good stretch ahead of us. Let's check in with Micah. Yeah, and the stretch ahead now through Wednesday actually looks just fine, like Bill was talking about. But once you get past that, we do have some bumps in the road. And they're not major bumps, but they're there. 55 degrees right now in Lexington. We're down South Williamsburg coming in at 55, and that goes for McCreary County. Pine Knot, uh, you work your way just to the west of that into Wayne County, Monticello, looking good. We're sitting there in the 50s. 67 by the afternoon. It's a pretty nice start to the day and a nice finish. So, all in all, this is a good looking day in store. We head off toward the evening hours. I don't see any problems, except it's going to be on the cool side. So, walking around the neighborhood this morning or this afternoon with the kiddos, it's not too bad, but it is on the cooler side of things. Once we get off into the night and into tomorrow, it's pretty much the same story all over again. But let me tell you this once we hit Thursday, off into your weekend, things change. And I'll show you if they're drastically changing or just changing for the better. We'll go over that in your forecast coming up with another hour of WKYT News. If you're about to take off, have a great day. If not, stick with us. We'll see you back here in a couple of minutes.